Hey everybody and welcome to this segment of Hometown Hype. I'm here with Mr. Byron Wells. And Mr. Byron, go on and tell me a little bit about yourself and about all the things that you do for Poplarville. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the people for letting us serve them for 16 years as an alderman. It's been a pleasure and an honor to serve the people. And uh, first, before I get in, it's more about our town than me and it's about the people of our town. And the reason I'd like to be the mayor is because we have so many good people in our town. We have people that respect our town, care about our town, and uh, I have been working with a lot of the different clubs and organizations and to improve our town. And it would be an honor to continue to work with them as being mayor. And some of the things that I have worked on within the last four years is we had an ambassador program with uh, the State Mississippi Development Authority, and uh, so I have been working along with other people from Picayune and the five supervisors to come up with a program to promote economic development in Popperville and Pearl River County. And then I, you know, served with the Keep Popperville Beautiful. I'm on its sale by five board. I've been the mayor pro tem. Uh, I'm a director in the chamber. Uh, of course, we're, I'm past president of the chamber. I've worked with the Athletic Association, been a chamber member uh, since 85, and work on different chamber projects. Historical Society, we've got that started. We got, of course, like I said, it's Sale by Five started. The First United Church has started, you know, feeding children that has no food. And then we got uh, different programs set out uh, where needed families in our community can get free food to help them get by. And I mean, working with people like that is more about everything they do and be a part of them. So that would give me, you know, that's the reason I would like to, to serve as mayor because of the type of people we have in Popperville. Exactly, that's, uh, I mean, you are so involved in it, so many things in Popperville. And you talked about the people, uh, I'm gonna skip down. So if we're talking about the people of Popperville, um, if you were having to describe somebody in Poplarville to somebody that didn't live here and never been here before, what would you, how would you describe the people of Poplarville? Well, just try to keep it as short as I can because there's so many good, so many good stuff about the people. They have a lot of pride, they have respect, uh, they believe in helping one another and you know, we're put here to be, you know, to be servants and to hold ourselves accountable and if we have someone in need or a disabled child, say for instance, you know, just like I'm a Shriner, well, I can get a hold of them and get a child help. We got the early childhood development. So you can actually come to Parkerville, Mississippi and have a child, birth a child, zero years old, and they can go like, you know, to two years of college. They can do vote tech, they can do academics, you know, uh, if they need help in school, if they have, say, a hearing disability, or if their eyes need checking, you know, through the Excel by five and the Board of Health, you know, those child, the children can be monitored mm -hmm. and checked on, and it will not cost a parent anything. Mm -hmm. And that shows the respect that these people have in our community. Plus, I always say, we have the first community college in the state of Mississippi. We have a great high school system when I say school, Popperville school system all the way through, and then we have a Head Start Center in Popperville, you know, uh, take care of anybody's need. We actually have a program here that if anybody doesn't have any health insurance, a group out of Picayune comes up and will help them, you know, uh, say if they got a cold or something major with them, you know, get them medication, and that's the people here in Popperville that coming together, the garden clubs, the historical society, you know, all working together. I mean, to me personally, that's my story when I talk about Popperville. It's not about me, it's about the people that lives in Popperville. Yes, sir, absolutely. And you, we, you were just talking about the schools, and I know that your wife works at PRCC. So tell me a little bit about how, and you talked about how important it is um, for the people in the schools to all mesh well together. Um, how, how important is that to you that the school, the public schools like the high school and PRCC mesh well together too? Well, I think uh, the schools, you know, work together good, but there's uh, like a different mindset now, you know, with the schools 
And when I say schools, we got, you know, some different administration. The past administration has set this forth and they're carrying it on because Pearl River Community College is not only coming out and helping, you know, uh, in other words, they put on uh, soccer camps at Pearl River and they have baseball camps and stuff that the kids in our community can come to. And plus, the teams now are going out and working in the community, say like at our Popperville Athletic Fields, where they've gone out and raked and helped prepare the fields. They've even uh, been in town to help with the, with the Keep Popperville Beautiful. The club and organizations picked that up. Of course, we have the Brownstone Center over there, of performing arts where, you know, they've had some different events that the high school could perform. They have high school kids come in. I mean, we have a, we, I mean, we have a arena. I mean, there's just so much goes on. And we're only 3,000 people in our city, but the college has about 32, you know, about 3,200 students basically during the school year. And we have 800 that lives on campus. Right. You know, people don't realize what that does for our town and our community. And we're always trying to promote our chamber uh, board sends out discounts for the college students and all. So we do everything we can to promote them and get them to promote us and Absolutely. to be a, be a respectful in which everything is a respectful community. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about you as mayor. Uh, this is um, a question for particularly what you would do as mayor. How do you plan to increase the tax base to cover the cost of city services? Well, the, now of course the city works on millage and taxes. You know, when I say taxes, I mean uh, the mills are taxes. They uh, true politicians like to say it's not a tax, but it is millage is a tax. So your school board is allowed to add two mills a year, which there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's a school board, but this, the popular school board has held their millage, you know, pretty much so intact without increasing taxes. And so like working on the city board for 16 years, you know, we have inventory tax we have to pay. And of course, uh, we can't do away with that. That's a state state tax. And uh, to one thing I think would help a whole lot is we need to help promote our businesses. And when I say promote them, we need to have a, 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 rep, a good fire department, a good police department, a safe place to shop, a safe place to come, uh, in a clean community that would make people want to come here and shop here. Because if the more we can increase their sales, the more sales tax we get, which will help us keep the millage down. Right. Because we have so many churches in government deal, which I'm proud we do, government buildings. But you know, the small business people, they need everything they can get because the small businesses, because I'm one and worked as a business owner over 20 years in Popperville, you know, you can't do anything but help them promote their business allow them to put up, you know, signs and advertisement, you know, in the places that they're allowed to. Of course, the chamber, uh, every year we go to the uh, welcome centers and uh, the chamber has developed a handout so when someone comes in to uh, the, ch the, what would you call it, the uh, welcome centers, they can pick up a back pamphlet and see what's here because we have a lot of ag tourism. We have a, you know, a bison farm, we have a mushroom farm, we have dairy farms, we have blueberry farms. Uh, we got a candy company, you know, we've got so much and a lot of people don't know that. And when the asset mapping come in and was looking at Popperville, they were amazed at everything we have. So they tell us we got to promote it. We, the people, got to go out and promote Popperville. So the chamber and different clubs and stuff, we have been promoting Popperville, hoping that it will increase stuff. Absolutely. Promote Popperville. Promote what yes. we're doing. And promote what we have. Exactly. Show everybody what we do have and what we are doing yeah. right now. Exactly. Um, we talked about earlier, we said that the city of Popperville is not just the city of Popperville. It's also connected to an even bigger part, Pearl River County. 
Uh, how would you like to see the relationship improve between the city and the Board of Supervisors? Well, uh, I have been working with the Board of Supervisors real close for, along with myself, some people from Pearl River Community College, the five Board of Supervisors, and uh, the Chamber in Picayune, the Chamber in Popperville, and the City of Picayune. Mississippi Development Authority picked nine, nine counties uh, a year and a half ago to help them promote their Popperville, and their, I mean their county. So in these meetings we have, they picked Lauderdale, Jones, and Pearl River County. So that's the three from I-20 South. And all of us have been working together to come up with empty land to work, to build. Uh, we are putting together a proposal when somebody comes in the county you know, we'll have an economic development director and he can show the, the companies these, this, this property is available or these buildings available. I mean, we, I would love to see, you know, a building built because people live here in Popperville and we're kind of like a bedroom community. We can't get big manufacturing, but we can attract small manufacturing to come to Popperville, right. you know, and, and have high tech jobs. Right. And you just talked about that you felt that um, Popperville was a bedroom community, which will lead me to my next question of how would you define the identity of Popperville? If you had to give Popperville an identity, what do you think of that? Well, we're the Blueberry Capital of, of Mississippi, and we're the first home of Pearl River Community College. Exactly. That's true. The, the, we're the oldest community college in the state, in the state of, Mississippi, of Mississippi, which is actually the number two college I think in, the know, state. in the state. Right. Uh, we've got a great community college over there. And we have a great, a great school system. Absolutely. You know, it's ranked, I think, what, a number five, yeah. I believe, in the state. I mean, I think that's pretty close to the top, what you can get. Right. Very impressive stats yeah. as far so as schools go. When you come here, you know, and, and people that come, the reason, you know, it's been so important to get a web page and to have a business like this in town is we need to get out. We've got to promote Popperville. Right. And we got to talk Popperville, we got to live Popperville, and we got to show people we care and we love our community. I mean, it's not about the town, it's about everybody around right. and all the communities. They're the people that helps make Popperville, plus the people in town. I mean, it's a community. You know, it's, it's a community exactly. group that has to promote herself. We have to build on what we already have. Instead of trying to get a bunch of, like you said, the larger manufacturers and stuff here, we need to build on what we already have here. And yeah. the business, the small business owners, yeah. like yourself, that are already here, that need our help as well. Yeah. And plus, like, when a major company comes in, you know, like, withdrawing a major company, they look at a 50-mile radius, like, you know, what is the workforce within 50 miles of Popperville? What kind of workforce can we get? Plus, even a small company comes to Popperville, we have a workforce development director at Pearl River Community College, so if they come to come here in Pearl River County and they say, we, we need a trained workforce, Pearl River Community College was set up a workforce training for, that will meet them right. and what they need. You know, Herbie Fryson's wife, you know, she is one of the people that works over there. Scott also Brooks, and just like our relationships with the supervisor and stuff, you know, we got $175,000 to repair underneath, the road fell in underneath the railroad that had been there 100 years ago. We got money appropriated, $175,000 to get that repaired. It didn't cost the citizens anything because we got a relationship with the highway commissioner and Herbie Fryson helped, you know, and uh, different ones helped us get the money to repair that. Exactly. That and so, I mean, that's a great plus. That's what you get when you got people that's working together, you know, right. and got a relationship with people in the state, you know, the highway commissioner and in your legislature and directors of Mississippi Development Authority in the South Mississippi Planning Development District, you know. In other words, you build a rapport over years, they know what you are, they know what you stand for, and they're willing to help you. Exactly, exactly. People three, two, one. Mr. Byron, we talked about the youth of Popperville and what you talked about, the zero to five 
And um, I've always heard my dad say that we can change the world with Little League Baseball. What kind of effect does that have to you, what, or what does that mean to you? Well, I expect your dad to say something like that because he was a good baseball player. <laughs> or <he> probably <laughs> still is. But anyway, I think what we do, we have to take our youth at a young age, teach them respect, you know, respect of the game, how you play the game, and to uh, care, you know, about your teammates, to work together as a team, because the only way you can, can continue to build is to be a team member. And that's what I think, because when you play ball, like baseball, you have, you have to play on a team. Football, you play on a team. Basketball, a team. Say if you played golf or something like that, it's about you. But team, building a team and being part of a team is really important. And that's why I think, you know, we can teach our young people that you're a part of our community, you know. Exactly. That your life matters. Exactly. And I think our people show that, you know, with everything that's available here for anyone. In other words, there's no one here in our town that should go without anything. Right. And that's like what you said about people coming together and being together and getting things done. It starts off in a, at a young age and teaching yeah. them how to work together. And how to work together. And get and, things done. Yeah, be a team member. Exactly. You know, exactly. Rather than, it not, I, don't, I don't never want a child to think, well, I'm on my own. Right. I always want to have an open door that if, if I don't know what I can do, but I will do something. Do something to help you. Do Absolutely. something to help you. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Byron, it has been a pleasure talking with you, and I hope that everyone that has been able to watch this video has gotten to know you a little bit better than they did before. And I encourage everyone to go out on May 2nd and vote for their mayoral candidate. And thank you for watching.